everybody. This is Karen Anderson with Supporting Success for Children with Hearing Loss. I'm director of our online resources and support website, and I am very excited to be here to kick off our free webinar to talk about Interact Streamer, which is automated speech to text captioning. So I'm just going to jump into our short PowerPoint presentation here. Interact Streamer or captioning is a classroom accommodation. And when we think about students with hearing loss, we know that most of them now are fully included in their general education settings. And unfortunately, hearing devices just do not restore normal hearing. Even the very expensive and recent great technology of FM or DM devices just don't restore hearing to typical hearing levels. So therefore, students who are hard of hearing are expending more energy to listen every minute they're in the classroom. And the more energy required to actually listening, listen, the fewer cognitive resources there are for these students to truly understand what it is that is being said and to remember it and to integrate it into their knowledge base. So it's not a surprise that as the vocabulary expectations get greater, as students move from grade to grade, that students who are hard of hearing have a hard time keeping up because they're just not accessing the same amount of information as their typically hearing peers. So it's, it really is hard to keep up. And it's not a surprise that many of our students who have really good performance or very appropriate performance in kindergarten and first grade, once we start to see them move to second and third grade, sometimes some gaps are, uh, are able to be observed in how they're performing academically. And by the time they reach upper elementary, it's not surprising to see a real academic gap between the kind of performance they had in earlier grades and the kind of performance they are able to, to do in the upper grades and secondary simply because of this lesser amount of access auditorily. I will always like to show this little story and what you'll see next uh, is line after line of a short children's story that's really quite well known. And what you'll see is that a hearing loss has been imposed on this story. And some of the endings are gone. Some of the words meld into the next words. And this is very similar to what it's like for a student with a 25 decibel hearing loss to hear. And a 25 decibel hearing loss is pretty typical for a child who's wearing really good hearing aids, assuming they have a mild to moderate hearing loss. So let's see. And I'll go ahead and read what the real story is. Once upon a time, a city mouse went to visit a country mouse. The country mouse lived in a field. He was glad to see his city friend. The two mice ran about the field and played until noon. Very different from what, for what this student heard from what you just heard. In other words, the, the words you see in the yellow box really do show that not being able to access all of the unemphasized parts of speech, all of those ending sounds, really make it much more difficult to capture the content of what's being said. So Interact Streamer is a classroom accommodation and in the U.S., the Americans with Disabilities Act in 2014 specified that schools must ensure that the communication of students with hearing loss is as effective as it is for their peers, and it thus affording them 
an equal opportunity to reach the same level of achievement as that provided to others. Students with hearing loss will always, always, always have access issues, even with our best hearing technology. And that's where captioning comes in. So the ADA specifies that if there is an issue with access, then effective communication needs to be provided through the provision of auxiliary aids and services. And auxiliary aids can include sign language interpreters, it can include these FM, DM devices, and captioning. These are all included as auxiliary aids, and the purpose is to level the playing field so that our students who are hard of hearing have the same level of access to verbal instruction and classroom communication as their hearing peers. So Interact Streamer can be used as a classroom accommodation in one of two ways. It can be a primary accommodation, and this happens when the student is missing so much auditorily that they really can't make sense of what's being said, and therefore they're looking at that captioning transcript primarily as their input for what the teacher is saying. Most often, this captioning is used as a secondary accommodation for the students who are wearing their hearing aids or their FM devices. These students are watching the teacher and they're clued in to what's being said in the classroom. But occasionally, or even frequently, they miss parts of what's being said. And in that case, they can uh, change their view from the teacher's mouth down to the captioning, catch what's being said, and then pop their eyes back to what the teacher is saying. So the secondary accommodation is more of how this particular technology is being used. Also, we know that for students who are uh, for students who have IEPs, that transi transition services are required to start no later than age 14. And they often start when the student is entering secondary school about the age of 12 or 13. And we need to recognize that the population of persons with hearing loss tends to be underemployed in our nation. Nationally, only 48% of persons who are deaf or hard of hearing are employed or they're underemployed. So we also know that the more edu education that these people have, or in general, the more education and training that a person has, the greater likelihood that they're going to be holding, able to hold down a meaningful job. So when we're looking at transition plans in schools, they really need to include helping that student prepare either for being in higher education or a post-secondary educational program or preparing them for employment. And what we need to have as an outcome is that the student is able to understand what accommodations they really need to function in an employment setting or in a setting of higher education. And so we do need to provide them with these examples of what, what is their difference when they're comprehending in the classroom just with their hearing devices versus comprehending when captioning is available or even sign language if this is something that they already have a skill level in. So our students really need to be able to know and own what their own accommodation needs are and how to request these accommodations. So that's all, sh all should be part of that transi transition process. So a trial with Interact Streamer can really further these students' transition goals. So today's webinar is to show you Streamer in action. And we really hope that by watching this webinar that your, your questions are going to be answered about how it works. And we want you to experience it for yourself. 
In case you haven't figured it out, Streamer is the captioning you see right below the slides, so you're already experiencing it. And then through watching it and having this discussion with you and having it described to you, you'll be able to start to get a feel for whether it might work for that student you have in mind or not. And I wanted to take a second and say, just as with FM DM technology, that hearing technology, it is going to be most successful when the student recognizes why it is important that this accommodation be used and is motivated to try it. We are dealing in general with adolescents here when we're talking about trying captioning through streamer and adolescents need to be involved in this discussion. They need to feel like that they have some control over what's happening to them. So just because streamer sounds like a good idea for a student doesn't mean it's going to be successful with that student unless we involve them, we excite them, and they are keen on using this new cool technology. So uh, through the rest of this, this webinar, um, Rob Palmquist, my partner from Auditory Sciences, is going to be presenting the ins and outs of Streamer. And um, Rob, take it away. Well, thank you, Karen. Yeah, and uh, so as Karen mentioned, at the very bottom here, what you're seeing is the captioning that's being generated by Streamer. And so this is all happening in uh, real time. Whoops, something just happened there. There we go, it's all happening in real time. Um, there is no person in the background typing or anything like that. Um, this is automated software that automatically generates the captioning for you. So there's no concept here of having to schedule a session with an interpreter or pay a per minute fee or a per session fee or anything like that. Everything that I'm saying is just being automatically captioned by the software. And you can see it's locked into my voice pretty well now, and everything that I'm saying will come across quite clearly. I do like spending just a moment uh, to give credit to the U.S. Marine Corps, as those are the folks that really funded this technology. So back when we got started working with the Marine Corps, we were working on language translation systems. The ability to instantly translate anything that was spoken in the field of great importance to the Marine Corps is being able to talk with the local populace. Uh, for example, in Iraq, if they want to be able to be able to speak Arabic uh, to those uh, native uh, individuals. And so we worked with them on that capability. And as a result of that success, they then came back to us and asked us to develop a captioning system to support the wounded warriors. Now, Marines in theater operations are certainly provided with hearing, I'm sorry, with hearing protection, but the reality is they tend not to wear that hearing protection. And the reason is because they need to have situational awareness. They need to hear footsteps coming up from behind them. And if they're wearing that hearing protection, they lose that situational awareness. As a result of that, they tend to not wear the protection and a 10 second blast of machine gun fire that happens right next to their ear results in a lifetime of permanent hearing loss. And so we're very honored to work with them on developing uh, this system. As part of our history of working with the Marine Corps, everything that we do is by definition extremely secure. And so we do meet all the student data privacy requirements as published by numerous various uh, uh, groups out there. But certainly we do meet all those student data privacy requirements. And so if that is a checkbox that you have in looking at software, um, definitely we meet that checkbox. Lots of different uh, firms have uh, and organizations have reviewed our products, so we're very uh, um, grateful for that as well. I thought I'd just pull this one up since it's getting to be Christmas shopping season. Um, and this uh, is the Retail Solution Providers Association. So these are the folks that test products for all the major retailers. Uh, so Best Buy, Target, Walmart, things like that. And as a result of their testing, they came back and selected ours as being the best for captioning and providing language translation. That's kind of a big deal. Um, in the education space, we recently also received this award as the best new education technology product. So kind of nice things that uh, we like uh, uh, trumpeting our horn a little bit every now and then. 
a huge element of the success of these systems is partnering with you, uh, you as educators, getting your feedback, your ideas, and using that to better improve the product. And we do that, mean that quite sincerely. And so I want to thank you for your ideas and suggestions. And in particular, there's several brand new features that we implemented as a direct result of that feedback. So the first one is the desire to have Interact run on basically any device, including iPads and Chromebooks. And so we did that. In the past, you had to use a Windows computer. You can still use Windows. That's absolutely fine. But now you can use Chromebooks or iPads or iPhones or Android phones, Kindles, basically anything that can connect to the Internet will run Streamer. The second item, make installs and updates easy to do. And so we actually want to step beyond that. We decided that you shouldn't have to do any installs or updates. And so all you do with Streamer is go to a website and log in. That's it. There are no software modules to download. You do not need to go to your IT department and give them a computer and ask them to do something for you. All you're doing is going to a website. It's as simple as that. And we'll show you that in a moment here. Um, in the past, we just had a headset option, and so we added a lapel microphone and a handheld microphone. Uh, the handheld really isn't needed so much in classroom environments, uh, but maybe I should hold that back. It is needed for all school assemblies. And so if you're in that type of environment, certainly we do also have the handheld wireless mic in addition to the lapel microphones. Additional languages, we constantly do get requests for unique languages in a given situation. And so Streamer does support much more languages than it did in the past. And something that we're working on right now, we're partnering with the folks at Phonak. They've been very supportive at uh, helping us ensure that Streamer is compatible with their FM systems. And so that's an active area that we're working with. And we'll step through and show you some of the results of that integration. And many schools now are being very successful using the Phonak systems in order to uh, integrate with Streamer. And so compatibility important to us, and we're appreciative of the folks at Phonak working with us to make all that indeed work. So as a result of that, what we came up with is Streamer. And I can pull this up here, and you can take a look at it. And so this is the Streamer software. And right now, you're seeing my captioning. And if somebody else were to jump in and start speaking, for example, Karen, <laughs> Um, you would see that her name gets listed as the person speaking at that given moment. There you go. You're, you're muted, but uh, we can see your uh, voice coming across. Um, and so if you're in a team teaching type situation, it's absolutely fine to use Streamer. Um, you can have as many teachers as you want participating in this, or um, if you have students in a small group session, so maybe you have a group of five students. Each of those five students could be speaking, and whatever they're saying will be captioned. Some really nice features built into this software. On the far right column here, you see the names of the various individuals that are currently logged into this particular room. If I don't want to see those names, I can hide them, and that's going to give me more space for the captioning to be presented, as you can see there. But in this particular case, I kind of like seeing who's in here, so I'm going to turn that back on. And so with the names being shown, now I can send private messages to individuals. So if you're an educator and you have a student that perhaps isn't quite paying attention, what you could do is just click on their name here. I'll do that now. And what I just did there is I sent a private message to uh, Mike Messina. And so he would see that on his computer. So you can send out a message um, to just a selected group of students. Um, and again, that can be very important depending on the particular uh, student that you're dealing with. You don't have to send that out to everybody in the session. Also with Streamer, I can uh, drag and drop documents. So if I want to send those out to students, uh, we can do that. The students can also send documents back to you. So this is a pretty complete communication system. On the far right here, I have the ability to download the transcript, and I guess I won't do that right now, but you can save that transcript and save it to an appropriate folder, for example, math class or something like that, and the student then will have that transcript for future reference. Now, you as an educator, if you're not comfortable giving them the ability to download transcripts, 
but you can remove that. So we give you complete control over who can access the room, how they can use the room. Do they have the ability to do add captioning or just view captioning? Do they have the ability to download the transcript? All those various commands are given to you so you have complete control over your private and secure room. So I wanna jump back over to the PowerPoint slides here and just step through some of those features real quick. So again, there is no installation required to use this software. All you're simply doing is going to a website and that's it. And when you go to that website, you'll be able to, well, let me make it a little bit bigger. Um, you'll be able to use the software. All you do then is click on the microphone to start captioning your speech, which obviously is doing right now for me. It is real-time contextual-based captioning. So this is not word for word or something like that. And this is also forward and reverse looking captioning. So as I'm speaking, you'll probably notice that some of these words are getting updated. The initial guess is wrong, but as it looks at the surrounding context, it's able to update that word. And so again, forward and backwards, we're looking back to see what previous words were spoken. And as new words are being entered, those are being used to adjust the previously generated word. What's going on here? Automated complete punctuation is not one long string of words. The punctuation does come in as the last step in this process. And so if you look further up at the captioning, you can see the punctuation is present up here. Whereas in the most recent words, it does take, oh, about four or five seconds for that captioning or that punctuation to get added. But certainly it does get added. So when you download that transcript, you're gonna be able to see that. Very powerful to have that captioning automatically be generated. We showed you earlier the ability to identify the person that is speaking. So if you're a student who is hard of hearing, it's important for you to know who is speaking at any given moment. And with this software, it automatically does that for you. Along those lines, you can support multiple speakers. So if you're in a team teaching situation or a group of students discussing perhaps a book that they read, uh, certainly we can support that situation just fine. Leaving private messages, sending documents, um, also the ability to personalize uh, their, their account, the student's account. That sounds kind of trivial, doesn't it? But it actually is kind of a big deal. And so a student has the ability to personalize it to whatever they want. So you can see my picture there, and I have a little note and such that I can put there. Um, somebody like John uh, Superman. And so the ability to personalize it sounds kind of trivial, but it can be a big thing for some students. And so we added that ability to it as well. Built-in user guide that's going to show you all the commands to use. You can download transcripts. You can add continuous voice synthesis. And that becomes important if you're using this as a translation system. So right now I'm speaking English, you're seeing the captioning in English. But we can set this up so that if you're speaking English or some other language, it can be presented to the student in whatever their preferred language is. For example, maybe something like Spanish. And let's see if I have one here, I think I do. And so what I have is a account that I previously set up uh, to be translated into Spanish. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. Whoops, I just hit it on you. There it is again. And so what you can see, hopefully you can look at both of these simultaneously, is I am speaking English and you can see how the English gets temporarily displayed in this translated version but then it gets quickly converted over to Spanish. So there it just got converted over to Spanish. So if you have a student that would prefer to listen to the lecture in Vietnamese or Russian or Korean or Spanish, whatever it might be, you can do this with this software. All you do is set up the account for that particular student so that it's in their desired language. And then if they click on this continuous TTS, they're gonna, in addition to being displayed in that native language, they're also gonna hear it in that native language. They'd be wearing an earbud or something like that so that they don't disturb the other students. But literally in a classroom, if you were speaking English and you had 10 students that each spoke a different language, one Spanish, one Korean, one Vietnamese, one Russian, so forth, everything that you're saying 
will be displayed to each of those 10 students in their preferred language, and whatever they say in their preferred language, you're going to see and hear in English. So some real powerful stuff went on there. Let's close out of the Spanish stuff. So with Interact, what you do is you enter a subscription. And so typically that's a year-long subscription. With that subscription, what you get is a private secure room that you're going to use for captioning the classroom conversations and lectures. So the student will have that to use throughout the course of the day, and if you want, in the evenings, wherever they go. Again, there is no concept here of having to set up or schedule a session or something like that. There's absolutely no concept of per minute fees or something like that. Um, this is an unlimited use account that you can use anywhere and any time that you have an internet connection. With that subscription, you can create as many accounts as you want. So right now, we're using my account, and you've seen Karen's account. And over here on the side, you see some other accounts, people that are logged into this room. You can have as many accounts as you want and allow those individuals to enter your room. You control the key, so you can decide who can enter it, and you can also kick them out if you want to. Um, again, you have complete control over who can use your subscription, or in other words, who can use your particular streamer room. Each streamer room, that is each subscription that you have for streamer, um, is used for captioning or translating a single conversation. So it can be as many people as you want participating in that conversation, but it is a single conversation. So again, access by as many people as you want, but if you have simultaneous classrooms going on, so you have a student in one classroom that wants to see a captioning of classroom A, and at the same time of the day, the same uh, class period, you have another student in classroom B that wants to see captioning, you'll need separate subscriptions, one for each room. So again, um, a single subscription is used to caption a given conversation. Sorry, I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, let us know. So the typical setup is a teacher with a wireless microphone, and that could be one that you buy from us, or it could be one that you already have, and then a student with some sort of device that can connect to the internet. And so all we want is the ability to connect. Um, generally, that's done using Wi-Fi. It could be a data plan on a smartphone. That's absolutely fine. All we're doing is transmitting uh, text and audio, not video, so we're not consuming huge amounts of bandwidth or something like that. And we need some sort of port for connecting an external microphone. So usually that's a USB port, but if you're using an iPad or an iPhone, um, you'll use a, a lightning port. And then you're going to use the Chrome browser in order to view it. So what does that look like in the classroom? Well, here you go. And the item that I want you to notice is that this student does not look any different than the other student. There's no big, bulky thing sitting on their desk or something like that. All they're doing is using some sort of device, in this case, a Microsoft Surface Pro, but it could be a Chromebook or an iPad, something that just allows that student to blend in with every other student in the classroom. For a lot of students, that's very important, that they're not appearing different. They're not looking different. Again, all we have is this tablet that's consuming a small portion of the desktop, that valuable desk space, and they're able to view the captioning as it's being generated. Okay, step through a little bit. The typical day in the life of a student, they'll carry whatever that tablet and the wireless microphone to the room. They'll click on their desktop app or a shortcut link, and that logs them into a streamer, um, automatically logs them in, puts them in their room. Now they're going to view the captioning. As the captioning is being generated, they can enter notes, things like that. At the end of the hour, if you allow them to do so, they're going to save the transcript to whatever their desired folder is, for example, math class or English class, history, whatever it might be. Then they're going to clear the transcript and go to the next class and start that process. So it just gets repeated throughout the day. So again, not very complicated here in terms of what's happening. Again, we can have multiple teachers, so you don't have to have just a single teacher here. You can have students with different devices. So if for whatever reason, one has a laptop, one has a Mac, one has an iPad, and another a Chromebook, no problem whatsoever. 
the software is going to support that situation just fine. And again, um, I guess I've kind of gone over this quite a bit, but you will use a single subscription in order to support a single conversation in a, in a class. Also, I briefly talked about multilingual translation of conversations. So if you're in a situation where a student would prefer to get the lecture in a different language, or more commonly, you have a parent or guardian at that IEP meeting that would prefer to be able to speak Vietnamese or whatever it might be, you can do that with this software. It's going to remove those language barriers. You can absolutely support multiple languages simultaneously. And in this particular case, if this one individual student speaks Spanish, this student would see that and hear it in Korean, this one in Hindi, and you would hear it in English. So complete bi-directional multilingual translation of anything that's being spoken. So lots of stuff going on there. Certainly the software is used in the classrooms all the time, but I did want to just point out some other areas. So captioning of all school assembly. So if all your students are in, let's say the gymnasium and you have 500 students in there, and just to pick a number, let's say 18 would like to view the captioning. That's absolutely great. So you would use a single subscription to allow all 18 of those students to view the captioning of what's being presented at that all school assembly. Same for captioning morning announcements. So now let's say that these 18 students in the morning are in 18 separate classrooms throughout your campus, each one in their own separate classroom. Again, you can use a single streamer subscription to present a captioning of those morning announcements to all 18 students. Again, because it's a single conversation that we're captioning. Hope that makes sense. Certainly supporting homebound students, we can do that uh, with Skype and uh, uh, English as a second language student. And if you're getting into flipped classrooms where you're captioning, need to caption videos, also we have support tools built in for that. Let's talk real quick about microphone systems. As I mentioned earlier in this presentation, you can use an existing FM system. So we've been working uh, currently with the people from Phonak, um, working with, for example, their uh, um, multi-touch, uh, I'm sorry, touchscreen microphone. And uh, certainly we've had very good success with that. So we have a lot of schools that are using that particular setup, and we encourage you to try that. So in that type of scenario, you're going to attach a second receiver to your existing wireless FM system. Um, for example, uh, the MyLink. That second receiver is used to connect to the student's captioning device. And by device, I just mean whatever computer they're using, an iPad or Chromebook or something like that. We do want to spend a little bit of effort in getting the audio out of that second receiver, the MyLink, into the computer. Um, we really don't like it when you use a lot of adapters and different cables and things like that um, for lots of reasons. Lots of parts, things can get lost, things can break, it's going to degrade the audio quality. And so it's best if you can spend a little bit of effort to find a single cable that's going to do everything that you would like it to do. Um, Mike Massini has put together several quick tip videos covering this particular area. So I'm going to give my voice a break. I'm going to take a quick drink of water, and I'm going to play this video for you. Hmm, I'm not sure if you can hear it too much, but really all it is is the music, and it's showing you how to connect up a, uh, a MyLink receiver. I'll go ahead and play that right now. <laughs> Again, that wasn't so much so that you could uh, memorize all the details going on there. 
but I really just wanted to show you a quick tip video. These are very useful videos and they only last about 30 seconds. And at the end here, I'm going to give you a, uh, a way to access all those particular videos. Um, the short way to do it, go to YouTube and just search for real-time captioning with Interact Streamer. And by the way, all of you that have registered for the webinar, we're going to send you a copy of these slides when it's done. You, know, you don't need to sit here and frantically write down all these links or something like that. Okay. If you do not have your own wireless system already, well, certainly we do offer two systems that we want you to consider. So the nano system and the dual system. I'm going to talk real quick about the various options of these two systems. Um, again, if you have an existing one, please go ahead and try that. If you don't have an existing one, then here's some options at least to consider. So the nano and the dual system, in both cases, you can get a headset, a handheld, or a lapel mic to go with these particular units. The nano system has one microphone input. So this could be a headset, a handheld, or a lapel mic. And it has a single connection. This connection, all it is, is a USB thumb drive. So there's no batteries or anything like that. And that's going to connect to the student's computer. So this is what it kind of looks like. You can see this USB thumb drive receiver. The teacher will wear a belt pack, usually with a lapel mic. If it's a very noisy classroom, you probably then go to the, uh, the headset. But again, uh, very small, very easy to fit in a pocket, um, very easy to use. The dual microphone system, now it has two microphone inputs, which is why we call it dual. And so you could have both a lapel mic that the teacher is wearing and a handheld mic that perhaps the student has. Um, for a small group discussion. You have two audio outputs. One is going to be connected to the computer, and the other one can connect to a hearing aid or cochlear implant. Uh, we kind of, you know, sort of hesitate to mention the hearing aid or cochlear implant. Depending on the system, that may not provide a very good quality um, audio output. And so it's best if you already have a wireless system like Phonak to go ahead and try using something like the Mylan Plus. So again, some of the features here of the dual system and the price point of being able to use that. Again, lots of videos that are up on the, uh, uh, I say lots, I'm saying three or four, that are up on uh, Mike's website, YouTube website, that you can take a look at and get more information on how to use these particular systems. I also want to mention that for the dual system, just recently introduced is a bracket that allows that to attach to the back of a smartphone. The dual receiver is about the size of a business card, two inches by three inches uh, by about a half inch thick, a little less than that. Um, but it's very easy for that to be now attached to the back of a cell phone. Why do you do that? Because that gives a student an extremely portable system. Anywhere that they have a cellular signal, they can use this using their data plan. They would not need Wi-Fi or something like that. So some really nice capabilities built into that particular system. Okay, let's jump into budget and uh, go over this real quick. Um, your Interact system is going to consist of the software, so you're going to subscribe to that. And you can see the prices there. Uh, the first year, um, right now the current deal is that the first year uh, comes in at right about $66 a month. After that first year, it's going to drop to $17 a month. Uh, these prices are going to change uh, in a few months here uh, going up. Um, but for now, this is the deal that we have. And so anybody that starts a trial or makes a purchase now is going to get that deal where forever um, you will be paying $199 uh, per year for uh, continuing that subscription. That comes out to be like $16.58 a month, so uh, pretty cheap. Um, with this account, you can create as many uh, streamer accounts as you want. We list here to 100. Uh, just because we wanted to cap it. We didn't want some hacker out there to go and create, you know, 50,000 accounts to bog down our system. If you need more than 100, let us know and we'll increase your cap. Uh, there's no charge for that. Um, the microphone system, if you already have a wireless FM system, then you're obviously not going to need to buy one. If you buy one from us, you see the price points there. And if you want extra microphones, you can do that. Uh, the computer that you're using, you know, right now, actually, Amazon Fires were on sale with the Cyber Monday deals for $29. So you could have gone as low as $29 to have a computer that's going to run this software absolutely fine. 
realistically, you're probably going to go out and buy a Chromebook or an iPad, something like that. And so whatever your price points are uh, for those devices, that's what should be included into your budget. We encourage you, strongly encourage you to start with a trial. There's no reason to not start with a trial. So the cost is $99. Um, if you include one of our wireless microphones, um, then you're going to pay a return deposit on that microphone. Um, if you don't include a wireless microphone, we're going to send you some components that will help you integrate with your existing wireless FM system. In particular, we're going to send you a uh, 2.5 to 3.5 millimeter cable um, that makes it easy to connect to the uh, Phonak system. It's a cable that's only like eight inches long and kind of difficult to find out there, a short cable with those adapters at it. So we're going to include that and we're going to include a uh, USB digitizer with that. You're going to get a full version of Interact Streamer that you can run on as many computers as you like, an infinite number of computers. So your personal one, the student's one, the parent's one, um, as many as you want. Feel free to share that with as many people as you want. And the cost of that trial then is fully credited to your eventual purchase. So there really isn't a downside to uh, starting up with a trial. Um, in order to do that, you're going to head over to the Supporting Success for Children uh, website here. I think this is a good chance maybe for you to jump in, Karen, because my voice is starting to go. And maybe you can step through a little bit of the uh, website here. Let me move this up just quickly so they can see your captioning. Sound good? Sounds good to me, Rob. Okay. Do you want to pull up the uh, purchasing page and I'll step people I, through that? You, you should have remote control. Can you uh, control that mouse? I can. Or? Oh, sorry, folks. There we go. There we are. Okay. I'm going to hit products and I want to go to purchasing interact. Oops. Sorry, the the control here is a little funky. All right. So yeah, this, it's hard you, because you get a little bit of a delay. You get like a half right. second delay and that kind of throws you off. So all I did is hit products on our, our upper menu and then we have interact automated uh, captioning and we have different pages here that provide some good information for you. But for right now, I'm trying to scroll down and not go crazy and just hit purchasing interact. And we'll wait for that to come up. One of the things while we're waiting I wanted to say is that the accuracy of the captioning will depend somewhat on the person speaking. So Rob's, for whatever reason, Rob's captioning is always a little bit more accurate than my captioning. I must clutter my speech a little bit. And so you might see that difference from speaker to speaker to speaker. So go ahead and scroll down here. And we talk about different, uh, different ways to go ahead and purchase streamer. And I just wanted to step you through here. The very first one we list is this $99 trial streamer room with no microphone rental. This is specifically for those situations where you have a student that's already using an Oticon or, an F, or a Phonak FM DM device. And that's when those cables will come along with this trial so that you can set up the captioning in a collaboration or in coordination with the FM accommodation you're already providing to that student. If you do not have those FM, DM uh, microphone transmitters already, don't assume you can go ahead and just use this with, say, um, a, a phone headset. That's not what this is for. This is for those students that where, where we're going to try it in, in coordination with their um, FM, DM device. If you want it, if you don't have a student who's using an FM, DM, a device and you want to try uh, Interact Streamer, that's great. We have the nano wireless microphone system that goes along with the trial or the dual wireless microphone system. So you would need to decide do you want to have that extra microphone available during the trial or just use that small 
USB kind of um, input for the trial period. As we scroll down further, um, right now, as Rob said, if you wanted to purchase it outright, the streamer annual subscription is $7.95, which it is going to go down next year once we get the the month by month subscription system up and running it will be cheaper than 795 but we wanted to point out that the advantage now is that you would be able to get subsequent years at $199 which is going to be much less than the annual subscription once we once we move to that month by month annual subscription option um, and then if you have had Interact AS before, you've given it a try, and you want to upgrade to Interact Streamer, you would need to purchase those in between years. So if you purchased it in 2016, you would need to purchase the years between 2016 and now, and those would be at $199. So it's cheaper for you just to update the previous Interact AS subscription or um, software you have this way than to buy it outright again for $795. So we scroll down. As Rob said, you can buy single, just the, if you wanted to buy a nano microphone system, not for a trial period, but just, just to buy one down the road. Um, we have those options to buy both the nano and the dual. Uh, wireless mic system. We have the different systems, different headsets, those, those uh, input devices. We have the headsets you can buy singly or buy four, get one free. Um, the same thing goes with uh, lapel mics, which aren't shown. It's a lapel mic. You probably know what that one already looks like, or a handheld microphone. Same thing. We wanted to provide you with um, these input devices if you don't have them and provide you with a price break if you want to have a number of them so that they're easily readily available in your different classroom situations. Uh, we have the cables that are also available if you um, if you would like to try it with your FMDM device. But again, with the $99 trial period uh, that we're listing up at the very top, you get those uh, along with that trial for $99. So that's the, that's the money part of this. Uh, we both want to encourage you to do a trial. Don't assume that this is going to work in every classroom with every teacher's voice and how they speak. And it's not every student is ready emotionally to go ahead and say, yeah, this captioning, captioning looks really cool. So we certainly need to involve our students in these discussions and trying it is what really sells it. Once the student realizes that he can use this captioning room on his phone, he can use it in school, he can use it in various places, it really is a benefit. I also wanted to let you know that Mike Messini, who is our consultant that works specifically with schools, that is what he is there for. And Mike is at this long email address that you see right here. And he's going to be the one that will be sending you the follow-up email probably by the end of tomorrow that's going to include uh, this a link to this recording and the slides and some other links specifically. But I want to in, uh, stress that Mike is, really has a lot of experience in working with schools um, who have students with different FM devices and helping them coordinate their various accommodations together so that that child's access is really optimized. We don't want you to use <laughs> interact captioning to the detriment of his auditory access. We really need to look at how that student is able to access his or her best overall and how captioning plays into that ability to access communication. So Rob, do you want to finish it up with your slides? 
Well, you know, let's jump back over to the PowerPoint slides. I do want to um, show people how they can use it for free today. Um, and so here's how to do that. And so signing up for a trial is great because uh, you're going to get a private and secure room and you're going to use that um, in the classroom and that sort of thing. But here's a way that you can do it for free today, right now, if you want, as you're watching this uh, webinar. Um, but uh, using Chrome on whatever device that you have there, uh, your smartphone or laptop, whatever you have in front of you, you're going to go to that website and uh, just uh, um, enter that in and that will uh, send you to the uh, register page. And in this particular case, you're just going to log in with the account that's shown there. Now, with your trial, we're going to get you your own admin account, your own room. It's a private and secure room, whereas this room is a public one that anybody can see. So to emphasize the point, use this free account to play with the system, but you don't want to put private information on there because anybody at any time can jump into that particular room. But this is a way to try it for free and uh, just play around with it. So again, open a Chrome browser um, on whatever device you have. Um, go to the website and just log in. Um, I guess that's about it. Um, if you want to play with the uh, language translation, I also created an account for Spanish. And so on your first computer, you'll log in using just the account teacher. And on the second computer, which you can pretend to be the student's computer, you would log in using the account teacher dash Spanish. And now everything that you say on the first computer is going to be displayed for you in English and displayed for that student in Spanish. And whatever they say back in Spanish is going to be translated onto your computer. Again, just emphasizing this point, we're very concerned about privacy and security. And so in this particular case, I do want to go out of my way to make sure everybody realizes that this particular free demo room is open to anybody watching this webinar. They're going to be able to log in and see your captioning. But you're encouraged to give it a try. Um, you know, there's some questions about uh, that we've gotten here about do we support medical terms and things like that. The answer is yes. And also, you can try it. You know, go ahead and log in and hit it with whatever vocabulary you want, and you will see a captioning being generated. Also, um, as we mentioned earlier, we do have the uh, video tutorials out there on YouTube. And we'll be sending you a copy of these slides so you'll be able to see them. But in particular, take a look at those 30-second, nah, maybe a minute in length videos. And those are really nice. Um, also, you can download a quick start guide by going to that particular uh, website link. It is case sensitive. Uh, but again, we'll be sending you these links because you've registered for the, uh, uh, for the webinar itself. Um, any other questions that you have, here's the way to contact us. Um, and Karen, I'll let you talk about the 60 minute certificate and then let you close us out. Absolutely, thanks Rob. We really appreciate the time you've taken to be a part of this webinar and watch Interact Streamer in action. And as my personal thanks, I am offering to give you a CEU certificate for 60 minutes. And all you need to do is email me at that email address you see, karen at successforkidswithhearingloss.com. Send that to me by the end of tomorrow, by tomorrow um, evening, end of school day. And I will go ahead and send out your CEU certificate. If you wait until next week, the offer expires. I'm only going to take um, and fulfill requests for CEU certificates until the end of tomorrow. And you don't have to send anything very long. You can just say CEU certificate in the subject line and uh, send it to me and I know what you want. I'll go ahead and send it back to you. And again, look uh, for an email from Mike Messini tomorrow, uh, probably by the end of the school day. And it will contain, as Rob said, the information, the recording, and the links and such for the trial. So you don't need to have written down everything. It will be coming to you. And we thoroughly encourage you to play with that demo room and give it a try this way, that way. Uh, ask the other people, contact the parents of the students you're interested in and have them play around with it and just see what 
you think. It, get your student excited about it. And um, hopefully, by doing so, you'll be willing then to do a formal trial with this for 30 days. So happy holidays to everyone. They're coming up fast. We're about ready for a winter break here in the U.S. And then we're on to the second rigorous half of the school year. So here's hoping that some of your students will be trying Interact Streamer captioning in 2019. Thanks to everybody and thanks Rob for being a great co-presenter. I appreciate you all. So bye-bye for now.